I recently ran into an acquaintance and um, she was telling me how great she felt. Of course, I asked why. And she said, she, you know, she had heard um, that eating gluten was bad, so she stopped eating it. And well, I was thrilled to hear that she was feeling good, but to myself, I questioned, was it the gluten or was it something else? I'm Neely with Neely on Nutrition, and I wanna take your fear out of eating certain foods. Gluten is a protein found in wheat, barley, and rye. And so any kind of bread, um, pastas, bagels, pizza crust, many sweets and treats contain gluten, among many other manufactured foods. For most people, gluten is not an issue. But for somebody with celiac disease, which is a serious autoimmune disease, gluten causes an immune response which damages the lining of the small intestine and where most nutrients are absorbed. With celiac disease, the body may not absorb the nutrients, resulting in nutrient deficiencies and a host of many other problems. An estimated 1% of the population has celiac disease and a gluten-free diet for life is the only treatment. There's another 6% of the population that may have nonspecific gluten sensitivity. Um, and in this small population of the, um, that has um, gluten sensitivity, gluten may cause GI um, distress and other symptoms. And then there's an estimated another 20 to 30% of the population who follow a gluten-free diet mistakenly thinking that gluten is bad for them. Following a gluten-free diet is still a trendy thing, and there's an abundance of popular books that criticize gluten and or wheat. Um, and unfortunately, there are many myths that um, around fear-based marketing related to gluten and wheat. Many foods are marketed as gluten-free, and some of which never had gluten to begin with. And we can't rule out anecdotal information. A friend or you may uh, make some change, like in this case, maybe gl going gluten-free, you feel better, and what gets the applause? No gluten. But was it? You'll likely attribute feeling better to the lack of gluten, but if we take a closer look, maybe some other changes were going on. Maybe you're eating more wholesome fruits and veggies, maybe limiting the ultra-processed foods, or maybe eating no more refined white flour, fast food, um, sweets and treats. Maybe you're incorporating more physical activity. Maybe you're walking in the evening or just getting better sleep. We don't know. If somebody chooses to avoid gluten, she may think it make her feel better, and it likely will, but not due to the magic of eliminating gluten. The power of the mind, the placebo effect is extraordinary. Not to mention the nocebo effect, which is equally powerful. If somebody thinks that eating gluten is gonna make her feel bad, then it probably will. That's what we call the nocebo effect. Interestingly, in a, um, tw a, a 2014 study, 37 self-identified gluten-sensitive um, people ate one of three diets, and they rotated between these three diets, high gluten, low gluten, or no gluten. All three diets caused pain, bloating, nauseousness, and gas to a similar degree. <laughs> it didn't matter if the diet contained high gluten or no gluten. With the explosive growth, though, of manufactured gluten-free foods, there are thousands of food products to choose from. But gluten-free junk food is still junk food. Plus, there's lots of products that just have, are marketed as gluten-free when they never had gluten to begin with. No doubt we can cut back on certain foods. Um, and many may benefit from cutting back on highly um, processed gluten-containing packaged foods. But to eliminate all gluten-containing foods, unless medically needed, is silly and unnecessary. If you're confused, need some help, let me know. <laughs> but in the meantime, excuse me, but could you please pass the gluten? Thanks for watching Neely on Nutrition. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.